any sort of mass media is never sort of a mirror of so-called reality out there. It is a representation, a reproduction, um, and it helps to constitute how we see the world. Um, if you ever heard me talk about uh, the rhetoric, uh, rhetoric uh, as axiological and epistemic and, and, um, and, and all that ontological, I mean, this is sort of you don't have to know all that stuff for this class, but you can go look it up if you want to, if you have a desire to learn. If not, um, so basically, here's the idea. And the, the last few sentences here. Have you ever thought about, hey, I, this, why can't I be more like the stuff I see on TV? Um, oftentimes, we gauge ourselves um, against or by things that are in there in the, in the media and CMC is part of that I mean well, this is not just CMC this is all sort of our technological mediated world um, why why can't my life be like that look at that look at that gorgeous woman on television why can't I be just like her look at these models I mean and we know they're fake but still we have this urge so so what becomes beautiful for instance what becomes naturalized as beautiful is is contrived. It's a it's a copy of something that was never real in the first place, and yet people try to emulate that and go through. I mean, it's horrible things when we think about issues of body image and, and, and particularly young women and issues of, of, of um, anorexia, bulimia, and all that type of stuff. I mean, this stuff matters. Um, and so, I mean, uh, several. Uh, I was talking to my other class about pop culture general, generally, and you know, like romance movies or shows or whatever. You know, why can't you know? Why can't my life be like that? But we tend to think, okay, that stuff is real, and so I want to emulate that. But then your emulation becomes a copy of something that was always a copy of something that was a copy of something that was never really. Nothing is real. What is authentic? What is real? I don't know. So that's sort of the world we live in. Um, I sort of say here, you know, sometimes we, we live our lives like we are, uh, we want to be the stars of our own uh, TV show or, or, or whatever. And there is a lot of ideas out there that people start obviously living their lives simulating what they see in popular culture and again those things in popular culture or whatever are not real so sometimes what becomes you know, it's just crazy so I'll let you read but there is some stuff interesting things about Barry Brummett when he talks about how and we know this there's issues of race and gender and everything like that you know people see for instance uh, certain depictions of African Americans on television and start to think oh that's what African how they are ah. stupid uh, it's all ugh. it really had to, to make a buck that's what media but in any case um, so a lot of what is real but a lot of this stuff our lives are sort of simulations of things that we have seen because we have been socialized to understand life and everything like that in this technological media age in which we live and was there ever a real life or a real world? I don't know. Maybe for cave people. Uh, 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 I once fried the chicken. I am sorry. Um, I am hungry. KFC. Uh, you know, I don't think cave people. What did they eat? They like they were hunters and gatherers. Nuts and berries and and, and bison and the caribou. And <laughs> fast food. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, never mind. Okay. Um. So, it's hard to think. How could we ever get back to some? I don't know. So, what do we do? Ah. Sometimes being aware of this world in which we live, the simulation is. Cool. 
uh, it, it's sort of being aware of this sort of goes, oh, I need to question this. You know, is this real? Is this not real? This, you know, what have you? Know. Um, sometimes you say, hey, don't worry, be happy. We just let them know. But, okay, so here's things to do. What this book offers us is um, some ideas about a certain mindset that I think we need to take to um, our understanding of computer mediated communication and its role in our culture, its role in our lives, everything like that. And they borrow, they call this the pil these the pillars of intellectual life, and they borrow this from uh, a philosopher Pierre Bourdieu or Bordeaux. I don't know. I'm not French. You know what French folks say when they're uh, riding on a roller coaster? Oui. Um, so, four things to think about here. Mindset. Demolition of simplistic either-ors. No either-or thinking. That is bad. It's either this way or that way. No false. For instance, things are better e either face-to-face, -face, FTF as all the cool kids say, or CMC. We can't think that way. It's, it's too messy. It's too messy. Uh, the critique, critique of received ideas. We have to question everything. We have received all these ideas about how the world works, how we should relate to one another, um, certain values, whatever. We have to question absolutely everything. Freedom with respect to those in power. We need to liberate ourselves from those that are in power who would shackle us. Folks who want to oppress us. And by the way, CMC is a really good way of doing that, but also it's a good way to oppress us. Um, but we need to, to embrace uh, our freedom and, and to, um, to rise up, as hokey as that sounds. Then respect for the complexity of problems. That is, there are no easy answers to everything, or to everything, or anything. Uh, things are always, always going to be more complex than we think they are. Some people say, oh, it's easy. You just... Not so much. Even the simplest things are, to me, not that simple. God, just deciding what to have for dinner is just, it's such a complex thing. I have nothing here. Um, you know, and I'm, apparently chicken is on my mind. Um, but always thinking about this stuff. Given that preface, sort of, um, the whole book, really the entire book, and this, I'm getting away from this book now, this book, our book that has not come in yet, uh, it's a big literature review. And if you don't know what the literature review is, it has nothing to do with uh, great uh, um, English literature like Harry Potter. It is uh, much more uh, about the scholarship that has been done, the research that has been done, and reviewing that published, good, you know, credible scholarship. It is biased towards uh, theories that are associated with interpersonal communication because these folks, for the most part, are interpersonal communication scholars. So there's a lot of social scientific, more uh, empirical type of research that they, uh, they work on or they work off of. So for those of you who've taken maybe some of my classes, like 499 or the old school uh, COM200, if you sort of remember the differences between humanistic ways of looking at the world and social scientific ways of looking at the world, this is a very sciencey. Um, and they say in the book it's the first of its kind. Maybe it was, I don't know, but cool. You know what folks always do at the beginning of every book, because oftentimes you see the beginning or read, that's the first thing you read when you're on Amazon, they want to sell you the book. Um, but it is good. It's a good book. Um, I do like that they try to debunk the myths by citing actual research. There's so much stuff out there about uh, you know, computer media communication or SNS, social network uh, networking sites or whatever. There's just, I mean, there's lots of ideas out there about communication generally that's just stupid. Let's talk about the research. For instance, John Gray. God, that guy. What was it? Men are from Mars and women are from Venus or vice versa. I don't know. First, that's either or thinking. Two different planets? Damn. I think we're all from Earth. I'm not. Um, but 
that was debunked. A lot of the things that he said, even though he made bajillions of dollars, was debunked by saying, that's ah, not really the case. You know. but what you gonna do? Uh, la, 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 la. Lots of fake scholarship out there. Um, a lot of this stuff is very theory-based. Obviously, they're building theories about how computer-mediated communication works um, and explaining them, but a lot of them, again, biased toward a more social, scientific, interpersonal uh, way of looking at things. But that's fine. That's cool. That's, that's the nature of what we're, we're after in this particular course, in part. Um, it does show the diversity of research and organizes that diversity, sort of. I mean, there's no rhetorical work, per se, that I might bring some stuff in. Um, but they do have those different areas uh, that they are interested in um, and that we'll cover throughout the course of the, uh, the semester. I like there's a little message to undergraduate instructors because, again, they're really trying to sell the book. Um, okay, so first chapter here, functional approach. And again, I know that you haven't read this, but the very first chapter in this book is called a functional approach to social networking sites. And by the way, social networking sites, or again, as all the cool kids say, SNS, or SNSs, at least the scholars, cool scholars say, basically the same as CMC. CMC actually might be better, or bigger, but who knows. Uh, but they're talking about things like Facebook and, and whatever. So they're interested in how do they function? That's a functional approach. How do people use them? That's it. Um, now, most folks say that uh, the, the primary function of stuff like Facebook is, in fact, to maintain or sustain or do something already with an established FTF or face-to-face -face relationship. That's sort of the big news. I don't think that's always the case, and they actually you know, uh, have a few uh, examples of that. But a lot of the research says that we very often, or most of the time, we use social networking sites um, in order to maintain or perhaps change or whatever already established face-to-face -face 